Hello everyone! Welcome back to Raven Relics. Today I am going to flip through this gorgeous custom order journal for you. Um, I received this custom order just about two weeks ago, I think, not quite two weeks ago, um, and we got the ball rolling pretty quick. She asked for a vintage travel journal, and I asked her a bunch of questions in response. We went from there. Eventually, I found this mossy green fabric, which she absolutely loved, and so I used this kind of as the base or the cornerstone for everything else. I have kind of a different setup going on today for filming. I actually have my tripod on my work table, so usually there's a big cutting mat right here, and this is where I stand to actually make all my books. Um, as opposed to being on the floor, which is where I've normally been. I think this is going to be a much better setup for me. I'm much more comfortable just standing up, so hopefully things will go more smoothly, at least on my end, behind the camera. So anyway, I am so excited to jump right into the flip through. Let's get started. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, silk ribbon closure, as always. Again, the girl, the new owner of this book, the girl who messaged me, she wanted vintage travel, and then I asked her for a couple of quote-unquote sub-theme, uh, or sub-themes, I guess. And she said, nature and steampunk. So technically, you could say this is travel, nature, steampunk, all combined. Here is the Sorry Silk Room Enclosure. This was actually originally white, and just like with the Celtic journal that I did back in December, about a month ago, maybe over a month ago, I took the white Sari silk and I coffee dyed it to get this um, kind of golden caramel tan color. It's really, really pretty. Actually, fun fact, I originally had a deep purple Sari silk ribbon as the closure, but I just, ah, I don't know. It didn't, it just didn't look right. It did not look right. And I have to give credit to my boyfriend because I was, you know, I was thinking about it a lot. Like I, I liked the purple, but it just wasn't good enough. And so he suggested that I try just coffee dyeing the white sari silk again. And it turned out perfect because it matches the little, I don't know if you can see here. There we go. The little uh, tan, golden, orange-ish uh, little bit of map here in the book plate. And then you'll see here, we'll get to it, but there's that paper again. Um, and I knew that I wanted to have this map paper sticking out the top as well as here. Uh, so again, you know, this tan color really matches and uh, it worked out. So thank you to my boyfriend for convincing me to do this and not go with the purple because it's like a thousand times better. Okay, all of the usual things for my books. Professional bookbinders board for the covers, archival grade adhesive, 100% Irish linen waxed thread, and then 50 pound drawing paper for the base text block. There are eight signatures, which are or is less signatures than I normally do. However, each of these eight signatures is thicker than I've ever made a signature, like ever, ever, ever. <laughs> I wanted to have a lot of options for her. And if you're watching this, hello, <laughs> thank you. Um, I wanted to have a lot of options for <clears throat> the new owner of this book to lay down photographs, you know, to have like a nice pretty background for photographs. So I used a lot more patterned paper um, and there's a lot more layering and just visual interest as opposed to one of my standard blank books. She did ask for lightly embellished and this may be, <laughs> this may be a little bit more than lightly embellished, maybe closer to moderately embellished, but that's because I just cannot help myself. So anyway, we have this gorgeous mossy green fabric, and then we have kind of vine-like Tim Holtz corner protectors, 
and again this beautiful old map paper inside the book plate. There are 235 pages total front and back. We decided on 200. Again, I can't help myself and ended up being 235. I'm trying to find my ruler. Oh, here we go. I couldn't find my ruler. And it turned out to be 4 and 12 inches wide by just about 10 and 3 inches long. So again, a little narrow, a little tall, kind of like the trend I've been going on lately. Um, all right, let's jump right into things. Here we go. I'm super excited. <clears throat> okay, make sure I'm centered. All right. So first things first, this, the bookmark. Just like with the Celtic Journal, again, <laughs> bringing up that Celtic book, I've used this real 1920s vintage lace ribbon for a bookmark, and it has the most amazing dragon and crest design ever. I am so obsessed. I have just enough left for one book after this. I have basically this much left. Um, so we'll see where I use it, but I definitely wanted to use it here for this very special custom order. So I'll just put that aside for now. The front cover pocket is a deep mossy forest green colored library bookmark. No, wait, what is this called? Library card. Wow, library card. <laughs> oh goodness. And inside the library card, it's been a long day full of, <laughs> full of playing with my puppies and juggling a thousand things. My brain is kind of done. Here is one of two beautiful tags made out of Tim Holtz paper. Here's the other side. Compass, digital image, and all of these digital images. Here's a postcard. All of the digital images and um, journal cards and all those things and tags, bookmarks, they have been hand aged with Tim Holtz Distress Ink. You'll see this paper again and again. Like I said, she wanted steampunk, so I knew, 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 knew that I had to use that paper. I will arrange these things much more nicely later. And on this first page here, we have a gorgeous border stamp. I believe that's Graphics Fairy. I will actually list every single, you know, uh, store that I purchased an image from in the listing, even though it's basically already purchased, I will still give credit to all images. All right, here on the second page, paper clipped, is a map, one of many maps. Again, vintage travel is the primary theme, so it's like full of maps. <laughs> I knew I wanted to include a ton of maps, and I love kind of folding them haphazardly like this, as well as nice and neatly into thirds or into an envelope or something like that. I just love that slightly messy look. Like the book is already telling a story and it hasn't even got to its owner yet. Graph paper or ledger paper. All paper has been coffee dyed um, and always, as usual, with baking soda. The baking soda reduces the acidity and therefore preserves the paper for as long as it would normally preserve itself. Um, so if you want to glue down images, just like she wants to glue down pictures, then, you know, the acid in the coffee is not going to wear away at the color over time or anything like that. Here's the first piece of lined paper, and I included all of it. So I just folded it up. Digital image of some beautiful pine trees. The other side of that lined paper, to live will be an awfully big adventure. I had to include that. <clears throat> Here's the other side of that ledger paper. 
and the first of several Empire line stamps. This is a little shield. You guys can see, right? <laughs> it's actually really hard for me to see what you see, so I think I'm centered. Okay. Gorgeous, marbling. There are so many pages that, I, you know, literally I just want to like pour over every single stain with you, but I won't. Trust me, the stains in this book came out amazing, even if the lighting is not showing them off as well as I want. Another Empire Line stamp. Sun in a wreath. Here is a little pocket that says remember, and there are some lines here for writing space, and inside the pocket we just have a couple little pieces of ephemera. Also coffee dyed, of course. Literally everything is coffee dyed. <laughs> Here is a piece of coffee dyed tracing paper. Love that crinkly sound. More ledger. A digital stamp of a pocket watch and I'm not gonna lie guys my printer jammed my huge you know Canon what is it yeah Canon printer <laughs> it jammed like two weeks into me first getting it um, and ever since then it will intermittently spew out a little tiny dot of ink like that when I print something and I kind of love I kind of love it I'm not gonna lie um, you know, especially when it comes out perfectly placed like this. It just adds that perfect grunge factor that I could not get otherwise. So happy mistake, right? So pocket watch down there, more uh, ledger paper. And then here is the map that I used a piece of to put in the front cover nameplate. I burnt the heck out of it <laughs> on purpose. Again, going for that messy, grungy look. Um, and I just love the colors. I love that teal blue, really all the shades of blue, right up against this orangey golden color that kind of goes with the sari silk, right? All right. Other side of the tracing paper. Other side of that beautiful green map paper and then a, a, a digital stamp of a globe. Really fancy. Beautiful. Corner stamp up there. Pocket down here with some lines for even more writing space. Another postcard and a little piece of ephemera on the side it says um, atlas of long island new york and then here is so i don't even know what it says it's just beautiful super old it looks like 1800s ephemera but it's tim holtz of course i'm so obsessed with this book you guys i love it so much like <laughs> this has I, I i'm just gonna pause here for a second um, I made an Instagram post actually <clears throat> several days ago, or no, I made an Instagram post actually when I first got the custom order request from this girl who I think is watching. Um, and in that Instagram post, I talked about how when I first started my business, when I first started Raven Relics back in May of 2018, I was really kind of resistant to custom orders because the whole point of me making this business was for me to follow my own personal joy and to create art inspired by myself, to be my own boss, you know. And I got my first custom order fairly quickly <laughs> and then another and another and another from friends, family, and complete strangers. And now I'm at a point where, you know, when I received this custom order, it's just ecstatic joy because I know that I will be inspired in ways I could never have been inspired, just me in my own mind. You know what I mean? 
getting inspiration from another person, especially when the themes that they want are somewhat related to the themes I normally pursue. It's just the best. It's the best. It's, I can't even describe it. So I love this book. And again, thank you if you're watching. Thank you for giving me the inspiration to do it because I now have 50 more journal ideas that I did not have before. Anyway, okay, rant over. <laughs> Um, here is the back side of a little tab that we'll see in a second, and another Empire Line stamp that I kind of fit in the tab shape because it just worked and I wanted to be funky and try something different. So here's that tab. It says uh, Persevere. And then inside the tab is another little Tim Holtz piece of ephemera. It says, I don't know what it says, it's something in Chile. It's in Spanish, I can't read it. And then there's another little map on the back. Map of, or the one half of a antique map of Africa. Here is another piece of lined paper that I just folded up so that I could fit, you know, the whole writing space there. Other side of it. other side of the Africa map and then clipped right here is one of my favorite things in this entire book and it is an envelope made out of this stunning stamp paper. I am so obsessed with this paper. Oh my gosh. So anyway, it's a little envelope and I folded up the sides in case you want to, you know, slip something in there. It's less likely to fall out. I don't think it would anyway, especially with the paper clip here, but just in case. Gorgeous. Another scroll upper border stamp. Here's that paper from the uh, cover pocket. I don't know if you remember that steampunk-esque hand paper. And then we have a little tuck spot down here made with an antique astrology image. Super cool, purple more ephemera in the pocket or the tuck spot I should say <laughs> let's be correct that's a tuck spot <laughs> oh my gosh this is the debut of another Empire line stamp but one that I just recently got it is uh, a little hourglass with wings and how amazing seriously I'm just gonna use this everywhere all the time I can't handle it and I wanted to put it kind of randomly in the middle of the page you know almost in the middle of the page as opposed to perfectly placed down in the corner because I wanted it to seem random and like it was actually flying across the page more old map paper this this is a real page from a book dating to, I believe, 1855. It's either 1855 or 1865, but this is real ephemera and it's beautiful. It says the Literary Society of Bombay. <laughs> yeah, super cool. And then in the center of this signature here, I sewed a piece of beautiful orangey, kind of like pink or peach colored floral paper. Um, and again, I folded it up so that I could keep the entire space. You could glue photographs right onto here. You could create your own pockets, whatever you want to do. It's just a nice big blank space that's a beautiful background for you. To work with. Here is a tuck spot um, made out of a really pretty image of a seagull. I didn't put anything in it but it is actually a tuck spot. Other side of the matte paper. Paper clipped here is a uh, glycine envelope and inside I have included a couple of simple paper frames for you. So 
anywhere that you want on any page. You could just glue these right down. Just take a glue stick. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of glue. I use archival grade adhesive, but that's just because <laughs> I'm the bookmaker, right? I'm giving you this foundational, you know, thing that you can then do whatever you want with. So don't hesitate to use something like a simple glue stick to just glue these down wherever you want. Um, and then you'll have a little header. All right. We're still, <laughs> I was off center there for a little bit. That's okay, that's okay. I'm such an awkward turtle. Okay, here is the other side of that steampunk hand paper. There's my classic Raven on a Branch stamp. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful image of a tree by the Graphics Fairy. Lined paper. Letter paper, here is another tuck spot that I did not put anything under, just left it open for you to, you know, stick your photographs in or whatever you want. But it's really a vibrant, cool piece of ephemera. And then here is the first of two tags that I made out of my favorite map cardstock of all time. I can't handle it. Oh my gosh. It's just a huge, gorgeous tag and or bookmark. Whatever you feel inspired to do with this, you do that. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but it's just beautiful. And in the center of this signature, I put the digital stamp of a Victorian family walking down the street. So you can see the thread right here. Other side of that letter paper. Other side of the lined paper. Digital stamp of a hand holding a big beautiful fan. And then we have some music paper over here. Chandelier stamp, some old kind of hodgepodge style letter paper. It's just a bunch of old letters kind of collaged all together. And then on the other side, I just folded it over to create a pocket. And then in here is an old peach colored French receipt. By the way, this is also the first time that I'll be filming in a one-to-one -one ratio as opposed to full-scale ratio. <laughs> I hope it works out. I, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm a bookmaker. I'm not a technical, like, technological... <laughs> I'm not that person. <laughs> I just want to make books. Okay. Here is another one of those insect tags from the very beginning. And then an old purple faded map. I don't know if you can even see the map itself. I crank, I literally just crumpled it, crumpled it all up and then I flattened it out, folded it up. Other side of that music paper and here is the other amazing amazing huge tag I just want to keep them for myself <laughs> I love them and on the other side here is a piece of ephemera from Nick the booksmith this is from her Sir Isaac Newton uh, digital kit so I not only aged this particular card with Distress Ink. I also coffee dyed this after I printed it. Now, usually with Ephemera, I, I do not coffee dye it. I just print the image on cardstock and then I 
age it with the ink with like a brush, you know, literally just by hand. But this time I coffee dyed this as well. So the image is kind of like faded and green and water stained now, which is what I was going for. Big, circular, gorgeous, ornate border stamp up at the top. Some kind of steampunk-esque paper that's just full of all these different definitions, like a dictionary page. Um, and a lot of the words have to do with travel. So vacation, unforgettable, somewhere, story, time, that kind of thing. This is a real... <laughs> real vintage piece of ephemera. It is a traveling requisition. I added the burn marks myself, but other than that, it is truly vintage and aged naturally. Huge ornate stamp that I put kind of sort of in the middle just for something different. And then we have a pocket down here made out of the same matte paper I made those huge tags out of. A strip of that purple matte paper, just as a bookmark, a tag, more writing space, whatever you want. More travel-esque ephemera. And a coffee dyed envelope. A piece of lined paper here in the center of this signature. Other side of that uh, dictionary definition page, I just folded this page over and then stuck a little bit of ephemera in there. old newspaper. This is a little tuck spot made out of another compass image, just like the, the uh, larger one that's in the front cover pocket. Ephemera stuck in there, more travel themed ephemera. Paper clipped up here is a coffee dyed glycine bag, just like the coffee dyed glycine envelope that we passed earlier. I have not put anything in here, but I figured it would be a nice little protective Something, something. I don't know what. It just looks cool. And we are almost done here. Oh, here is a very faded Griffin stamp. There we go. And opposite it at the top here is a label that I just glued straight down. So it's not a tuck spot or anything like that. It's just kind of a a different decorative header. Other side of this pretty gold paper with a big side pocket made out of the steampunk paper. Other side of that newspaper. Just a couple little pieces of ephemera to go in here. This is a big envelope made out of letter paper. And final page has maybe the coolest stamp of all. It's a big hot air balloon, super colorful and vibrant, and it says goodbye. Again, steampunk vibes. Here is my maker's mark. And then here is the inside of the back cover. This is kind of a better view of the gorgeous chocolate brown end papers that have this ornate compass design. And the nameplate up at the top here is a Nick the Booksmith nameplate. Gorgeous tree image. And that's it. Whew. Wow. My goodness. Okay. Oh, and also, I should say, let me put this back in. Um, this little envelope here that I've had next to me the whole time will also be included. I think I'm going to put a stamp on it <laughs> or something on it, but inside, and it is coffee dyed, of course, I've just included 
a few little things, including a gold skeleton key. And a big, uh, kind of like a sundial face with Roman numerals. So those little pieces of treasure <laughs> will just be in this envelope and I will paper clip this somewhere in the book. I just wanted to have it out kind of as a little side piece and visual interest. So that is that. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next now that this custom order is complete. I have a few different ideas. Um, I'm just going to go with my intuition and follow my joy in the path of least resistance as always. Um, and I'll keep you guys posted. Follow me on Instagram and Patreon and of course YouTube. All the links will be down below. Um, if you liked this video, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and share with your friends. If you yourself are interested in, in a custom order journal by me, please don't hesitate to reach out on any of my social media platforms, including Etsy. Um, so yeah, I think that's it, guys. I'm super excited about this book. Again, thank you so much to the new owner who I believe is watching. Thank you, thank you. You made my week, you made my month, truly. So that's it for now, guys. It's on to the next. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.